Hi, everyone, and good morning. I am here today with John Shumley, a project lead here at Beck Technology. Uh, he's going to be giving a brief look into how to utilize layers within 2D Takeoff. And afterwards, we're going to have just a quick Q&A with uh, some questions from our audience. Definitely feel free if you have any questions during the webinar to send those in. We would love to hear them. And without further ado, I am going to hand things over to John. John, if you want to take it away. Um, sorry, a little audio difficulty there. Um, so what I was what I was saying is um, now we want to get in and, and look at layering our our documents so that we can actually just see what it is we're working on and not all the additional noise of everything else that, that's already been taken off. So just like we did our setup for our groupings, we can come over here in our filter view. Um, and this filter view has a lot of a lot of functionality throughout all of Estimator. Um, but what we specifically want to look at, you can see now we're grouped by suicide level one and two within the estimate. I'm going to go ahead and just remove that and set up the same for our filtering as I did for our groupings in there. So we just kind of have some apples to apples comparisons and pull that in, you'll see that this is now broken down and it actually matches the same. Now, as you walk through these, if we want to just look at finishes, you'll notice everything that's not part of finishes is broken away and is now hidden and we're seeing just the finishes layer. But we can continue drilling down on that and say, well, I want to see all flooring. Well, let me just look at where we have the carpeting, concrete, tile, um, just however you need to break it down uh, to, to see what you want to work on. Because this is our filter, you can filter on not only the items in your takeoff, but other estimate properties as well. So one of the great ways to do this as you're going through and working, so we have our takeoff one, two, and three, but what we really want to be looking at is what do I have left a map cost to? So in Estimator, we have an is mapped uh, filter option. So I'm going to move that over and I'm going to go ahead and move it to the top. I want that to, at, the, at the top of my filter. So now I'll remap that. So now we can see we have things that are mapped and things that are unmapped. So now you can start drilling down and after the map, everything that's mapped is going to show up the same way. So you still have your same filtering um, at the different levels that you can go and set up. And you'll notice here we have some unmapped concrete. And you're like, oh, well, I don't have any unmapped concrete. Well, again, this applies to the entire estimate to all drawings. So these filters will carry from page to page as you go through your set of drawings. So here I know that my unmapped stuff I have on previous page because I did this one. Um, so you can notice now I have unmapped concrete um, just setting out here, if I look at my map, if I start getting into my um, site construction, now we can start seeing um, the different things that we have set up with our landscaping, um, any of the concrete work, the specialties, you know, all the way down to signage. Um, gotta kind of zoom in to see some of this on this small um, resolution. We can look at the concrete. So all of this stuff has previously been mapped and then we can also filter and unmap. So this will give you the layering that you're looking for in uh, not only your model for your takeoff, you can also use this same filtering to actually look through your estimate as well. So if I go to my estimate view, I know I have mapped up here when we were looking at flooring earlier. I can go look at the carpet. Here are the line items actually associated with the carpet layer that we were using in our takeoff. If you want to go and look at this in a different way, we can actually set we can actually set this up um, to go look at it by by we'll look at it as CSI and look at the various CSI levels. Um, so we can see our estimate set up that way as well. But if we go back to our um, takeoff, we can also see where we have um, the cost associated at a CSI level um, 
that goes along with the estimate. So the, the layering and filtering can work not only on uh, the properties that you set up for layering, you can also use it to see the, how it's associated with your cost um, and, and other things within your estimate and how they're all tied together. So anyway, that was the, uh, the quick overview of using the, the layering in our 2D modeling. And uh, I guess we'll look for any questions that we may have. Great, thank you so much, Chum. And I'd like to apologize again to our attendees for that momentary audio difficulty that we were having. Um, it looks like that we have a few questions here um, from our post registration survey. Um, one of the questions that we had was, in other softwares, a lot of times there are pre-baked properties um, into, take up, into conditions. Uh, was there a reason behind Destiny Estimator doing it in a more user configurable way? Yeah, when we when we look at this, everybody does their job a little differently. Nobody does their job the same way. So for us to assume that you know you need a property called layer and you're just going to go and make something up that fits for what your layer is, when really what you do is master format. Um, so you want a master format layer as opposed to just a generic layer. Um, we also feel that you should be able to add, you know, what makes sense for your business and not what made sense for the company who designed it. We want to put the power into your hands for the way you work and the way your team works. It's awesome. So it definitely sounds like you're trying to focus on having a very uh, client oriented experience to where you can kind of massage it to be whatever you need it to be. Exactly. We want it to be flexible to fit your business instead of you having to try and fit into ours. Perfect. Okay, that makes sense. Um, the other question that we have here is, so how many layers, takeoff items, whatever you end up naming it, how many of those can you have? Is there a fixed amount um, or how does that work? There is not a fixed amount. You can build that out as shallow or as deep as you want. You could have a single layer um, that, that you want to set yours up on. You could have 10 layers. Um, it, it really, again, we want to put that flexibility back into your hands on how you do your job um, and not try and dictate how we expect you to do your job. So um, as many as you want, as few as you want, I mean, everything in between. Awesome, okay. Well, I think that's all the questions that we have today. Um, just a heads up, we will be having a webinar next Wednesday, um, 10 a.m. CST. Uh, we're going to be talking to um, a guest from Beckenhauer Construction. So make sure to sign up for that. Um, and we will also be doing another feature of the month uh, webinar around the third week of September, so keep an eye out for those invitations. Um, again, thank you so much, Ch uh, John, for agreeing to be here with us today, and we look forward to seeing you guys again next time. Yeah, thanks, everyone.